Alhamdulillah, now we have a, another time with the main theme of the surahs of the Quran and to talk more about the topics that we wanted to, to deal with when it comes to the Quran and knowing the tafsir of some of the surahs and what is the main theme of the surah. And the main idea by the end of this session to have at the end of that time, inshallah, by the time that we reach to that, to the, 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 the end or the, the end of the list that we have the names and chapters of the Quran in it, to have a, a, a big and a major glossary, that glossary will tell us more about the, what is each surah is talking about. And alhamdulillah, we started, we started the chapter 19 talking about the story of the prophet Zakaria and his son, prophet Yahya, John. And also uh, we will move to the point that we will talk about Maryam, Sayyida Maryam, the blessed lady Maryam. And, uh, and alhamdulillah, one of the things that I wanted uh, just to share with you about the reality of Sayyidah Maryam in Islam, that Islam talked highly about Maryam, about Mary, in such amazing way that even some versions in the Bible that didn't talk highly like this when it comes to Maryam, alayhi salam. Even the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Took, took, talked highly about Maryam, about Mary. As I told you the hadith, I, I don't know if you still remember the hadith that we mentioned last week when he وسلم, said, Kamula min al nisa'i arba'a. Four women had perfected their religion. So he, he first mentioned the, the first one, the top on the list was Maryam, Mary. And who is number two? Khadija, and then Fatima, and number four, Asiya, the wife of Fir'aun. So four women had perfected their religion. On the top of the list, he put Mary. And just tonight, I wanted you, inshallah, to give me your attention a little bit so we get to know how Islam talked highly about Mary. And that will give you the knowledge, so even if somebody had, you know, accused you that you do not love Mary, that you do not love Jesus, that you know, you know nothing about them, at least you get some of that little knowledge that you can talk, that you can express yourself, that you can declare the truth, share the reality with each and every one about who is Jesus in Islam, who is Mary in Islam. So the name of the chapter, chapter 19 itself, named after Mary. And number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had, give had given us a bunch of the verses in the Quran, whether in Surah Maryam, whether in or, or, or Surah Al-Imran, Allah is talking highly in both of them about the status of Maryam, the status of Mary, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had honored and defended the chastity, the modesty of Mary. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that is how the story had started. Allah said, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ Maryam." O oh, Muhammad, mention to them in the book means in the Quran, mention to your people, mention to, you, to the Muslims about the story of Mary. And by the way, what's the meaning of the word Mary? In Islam or in Arabic, in Arabi, Maryam. In English, of course, Mary. In Hebrew, Miriam. So it means the lady, the modest lady, the lady that has a great honor and great status amongst his, her people. One of the meanings also that we found in the Arabic language, that also Maryam, it could mean the lady who is serving Allah, who is serving the Lord, the master, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So just I wanted to give you a hint about that meaning, Maryam, Mary, the chastity 
and the chastity of Mary. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, remember and mention to them the story of Mary when she got aside, when she went aside from her people, when she abandoned her people and she went a little bit away from them. Allah is telling us about the generic mode of Mary. Mary is a devoted worshiper. And as, as you know, with the story of her pregnancy, when her mother wa was pregnant on Mary, she said, inni, inni wa, inni nadhartu. Oh Allah, I made nadhr. I vowed Mary for you so she will serve you. So from day one, from day one, Mary was assigned to that job to serve the house of Allah and to, to lead the community. And also, not, not in Salah, of course, but to lead the community means to be a good example for the community in the chastity, in the, the consciousness of Allah, in tolerance, in repenting, in worshiping, in you know, servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the main idea of having Mary at that place. Allah said she used to get to, 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 to be away from her own family because she loved Allah more than anything else. Allah said, in Tabarat min ahliha makanam sharqiyya. She went to the east side. And the scholar said, Imam al Qurtubi especially said, she went to the east side, the east side of the Jerusalem, of Al Masjid al Aqsa, of Al Quds. She was worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Al Quds. She went to the eastern area and she stayed there remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she did not prefer to be mixed with the, the great number of the congregation and, and lots of people are talking somewhere. You know, you know, that could happen even with us in Ramadan, you know, by the time of iftar, you have people are talking, subhanAllah, about dunya. It's time before Adhan, it's time for dua. It's time before Adhan to make dua. Do not talk about dunya, that's not the proper time to be mixed together to talk about dunya. So if like, for example, if Dr. Yusuf saw people are mixed together and talking about dunya, so he will, you know, go a little bit, a little bit far away from them and he will be indulged in dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Maryam did. This is what Mary had done, had done. SubhanAllah, Allah said, فَاتَّخَذَتْ مِن دُونِهِمْ حِجَابًا She put a like hijab, you know hijab? She put like a curtain, a barrier between her and the rest of people. She wanted to be in that mode of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَاللَّهُ said, فَاتَّخَذَتْ مِن دُونِهِمْ حِجَابًا فَأَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهَا رُوحَنَا and then we sent to her our messenger, Jibreel. فَتَمَثَّلَ لَهَا بَشَرًا And he came to her in the form of human who is upright. Upright means what? He is good, fat, healthy. And sawiya has another meaning as Imam Ibn Kathir had said. Sawiya means righteous, righteous, good, good man, good man. Once she looked at him, she figured out that he is a good man. But look at this, at a modest lady, a modest woman who is sitting alone inside that curtain and she's remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all of the sudden, a man had appeared from nowhere. And he said, like, assalamu alaikum, for example. So what do you feel? She felt terrifying. She said, inni, 
إني أعوذ بالرحمن منك إن كنت تقيا I seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even though if you had the consciousness of Allah but I'm still I do not feel safe I feel fear and worry about your existence here your presence where did you come from then he said do not worry innama ana rasulu rabbik i am the messenger of allah to you why to give you the good news of having ghulaman zakiya to you are going to get you are going to be pregnant of a pure boy you remember what happened with sayyidina zakaria last time when we told you he didn't say a child because that could be a boy or girl but he said ghulaman so from the first moment the good news that you will you are going to get a pure boy son and all of the sudden she did not marry she is virgin and this is what we believe in as muslims some other people some other sectors do not believe in that that's what the, like their choice but we as muslims we believe in in the chastity the modesty the virginity of mary allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent the angel to mary while she is virgin and nobody had touched her even though some of the narration said that she had a man who was serving the chamber and the place of worship with her that man do you know that name they said yusuf and najjar okay one of the like one of the narration said yusuf and najjar they said he was worshiping like serving some other people may allah guide all of them allahumma amin ya rabbal alamin they started to accuse mary with that man which something we do not believe and we do not accept on mary we defend mary we as muslims love mary and defend her defend her so allah said you are going to get a boy the first impression the first reaction <clears throat> she said anna yakunu li ghulam how come that i will have a boy wa lam yamsasni bashar and no human being had touched me before and look at even to the etiquette to the language she said no one had even touched me and touched me is a metaphorical expression means i did not have any relationship with with anyone physical relationship with anyone wala mi amsasni bash no one had touched me before it's a metaphorical you know expression wala aku baghiya and i even i i always had the good behavior and the good manners so how how sayyidina jibril or jibrail how did he respond he said qala kadhalik allah kadhalik means what that's it allah had decided this it's done means allah had decided so there is no argument yes no argument false stop end of the story case closed you know qala kadhalik then he said qala rabbuki huwa alayya hayyin allah had said that's easy for me that's easy i am capable of doing that so easy allah can do this he is the creator subhanahu wa ta'ala then allah gave us the wisdom and then allah said the wisdom behind all what happened to mary allah said walina ja'alahu ayatan linnas wa rahmatan minna wa kana amran maqdiyya i will make him 
as a miracle, as a sign for people. That's why, listen to this. I want you get the knowledge, especially these days, because we are getting, you know, to the, the celebrations and, and different forms of what people are doing. I need you to get the solid knowledge. So do you believe in the miraculous birth of Jesus? Yes, of course. Of course, this is what Allah had said. I am going to make him as a miracle. That's number one. Do you believe that he is the Christ? Yes. Do you believe in him as the Messiah? Yes. Do you believe in him as the word of Allah? Yes. So when you have a, a, a Christian friend and he tells you, you know what? Jesus is the word. Tell him, I do not disagree. I agree. He's the word. But he's the word of Allah. Okay? This is what we believe in. I, as I told you, <laughs> that the first impression of some, some of the young uh, generation who came, and he said, you know what, Imam? I'm not a Muslim. I, but I, I only believe in, in the oneness of God. I said, congratulations. You are half Muslim. You are 50% Muslim. So if somebody told you Jesus is the word, yes, sir. yes, I agree. I agree. We believe. Allah said, wa kalimatuhu. He is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But listen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, wa kana amran maqdiyya. And it was a done deal. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَحَمَلَتْهُ She conceived him. She got pregnant of Jesus, of Isa. And when she got pregnant, here is, I will not say a, a debate, but I, for, for the amana that we promised Allah to deliver, you know, for the amana that we have upon our shoulders, I have to tell you, that both of the opinions did Mary conceive Jesus for nine months as the regular woman or she just got pregnant and she delivered so what do you think which opinion is the right one did she got nine months long nine months long as normal pregnancy or she got pregnant, then all of a the sudden she did, she delivered, then she took him to the people. Which which opinion? We have lots of scholars here. Second. The first scholar, yes, go ahead. <laughs> Imam Yusuf. Yes. Me, me, immediately. Okay, doctor. Well, the Quran does not give us a explicit um, the, evidence. So we, we have to. Now, so Allahu Alam. Allahu Alam. Allahu. That's a very smart thing. You remember Imam Malik? Allahu Alam. Yes, Imam Malik. Yes, bro. The only thing is that he did say that she secluded herself when she got pregnant. Yes. So that means there was a period of time when she did not come into public affairs. So it's not looks like a sudden or immediate event. Yes. So it it wasn't immediate pregnancy, and this is what. The, 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 the consensus of the scholar had agreed upon. And Imam Al-Qurtubi, Imam Ibn Kathir, both of them, I, don't, I do not want to spend all the time in this debate, but it's a, it's a technical one. If you are a student of knowledge, you know, you can go and, and search on that because we have one opinion for one of the great companions who had this argument, like who'd spread this dispute amongst the scholars. I will let you know the name. Imam Ibn Qurtubi, Imam Ibn Kathir said, we did not have obvious, we did not have clear evidence, clear clue from the Quran that she got immediate or sudden pregnant and pregnancy and delivery. And even what is mentioned in the Quran, Allah said, فَحَمَلَتْهُ فَانْتَبَذَتْ means she got pregnant and she went aside. 
She went far away from her people. And here is the narration. Imam Ibn Kathir had mentioned. You, you remember the man who, who, was, who was in her company? What's his name? What's, her, what's his name? Yusuf al Najjar. So they said that Yusuf al Najjar had noticed day after day, day after day, the size of her belly, you know, that it goes bigger and bigger. When he noticed that there is something strange, he told her what happened, you know? He got shocked by this. That means she took time. Allah knows if it was nine months, eight months, seven months, we do not know. But we do not have clear evidence for that she got immediate pregnancy and immediate delivery. The only opinion was from Sayyiduna Abdullahi ibn Abbas. The only one amongst the companions, you know, that the scholars had mentioned, the only one said that she got immediate pregnancy and immediate delivery. I told you before that I am following the, mostly the opinion of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas. The only one said that was Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, that she got the immediate pregnancy, the immediate delivery, and she did not stay nine months. How did he understood that? Understand this because of one letter. Allah said, Fahamalat, she conceived him. Fantabadat, look at the fa. Fa means immediately. Fantabadat bihi, al makhab. She started to get the pain of delivery. This is the case. Fahamalat hu fa. Fantabadat immediately. He, if yes, if it has wow, this is what Ibn Abbas said. He said, if Allah said, فَحَمَلَتْهُ وَانْتَبَذَتْ وَأَجَاءَهَا it we could have time, or even thumma, thumma, it could have a period of time, especially when we say nine months, nine months, that could possibly Allah could express with thumma or wow, but Allah said. فحملت, who she conceived, فانتبذت, she got away from her family, then she got the pain of delivery. Those are with three facts, means immediately, immediately, immediately. I have to give you that, both of them. So which, which, which opinion that I have, which opinion that I admit or I follow, the opinion of the, the consensus of the scholars that she spent period of time. That it, was, it wasn't immediate because we do not have clear evidence on that she got immediate delivery and immediate pregnancy. Anyhow, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, She got the pain of the delivery. And here is the case. When she got that pain, she sat next to the trunk of palm tree. Qalat. When she got that pain, Ya laytani mittu qabla hadha. I wish if I died before this time. You know, every, every lady when she got the pain of pregnancy, that of our delivery or childbirth, she cries. Maybe you experience that with your wife. She cries. But subhanAllah, after the delivery, she cries even, but out, out of joy, out of happiness. Now she had a boy, she had a baby, you know? But she will cry out of what? Sadness. Because she is busy with thinking about her people, about how did I get that? I am in trouble. How they are going to react? That's the case. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to console her. 
She said, Ya laytani mitu qabla hada, wa kuntu nasiya mansiya. I wish that I had got forgotten, means no one would remember me from my people. Allah said, Fanadaga min tahtiha. A voice or a sound came underneath her, from underneath her, means the voice of the angel, Jibreel alayhi salam. Allah tahzani. Do not feel sad. Do not feel sorry. Qad ja'ala rabbuki tahtaki sariya. Allah had granted you from the beneath you, from underneath you, Allah granted you a stream. A stream for what? To drink, to get water. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So miracle after miracle, the pregnancy and the delivery and also the stream. Then Allah said, and then shake the trunk of the palm tree. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, we could shake the top of the palm tree, not the trunk. How could for a lady or for a woman, she had the pain of the delivery to shake the trunk of the palm tree? That's impossible. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted her just to, to do any, like, like to take with, to consider the means. One of the, the scholars said, وَلَوْ شَاءَ لَأَدْنَ الْجِزْعَ الْجِذْعَ مِنْ غَيْرِهِ الزَّتٍ وَلَكِنْ كُلُّ شَيْءٍ لَهُ سَبَبٌ If Allah had willed, He could bring the branch itself to her so she can pick up what she wants. But Allah wanted her to consider the means. Means what? Shake, even if you are going to shake or to put your hand to touch the trunk of the balm tree, Allah will make it as a reason, as a cause, then the fresh, the ripe dates will fall upon you. And that's why in the Torah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had said, Ya ibn Adam, O oh, the children of Adam, Harrik yadak, laka fi rizqik. Shake your hand. I will give you rizq. What's, what does it mean? Shake your hand. Try. 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 Do something. You know? Shake your hand. Shake your hand. I will give you rizq. I will ex not even risk. Obsit. Obsit means extend. I will give you much risk. But shake your hand. Do something. Work. G do effort. Show Allah that you have good intention. Then Allah said, Huzzi ilayki. Just shake the, the, the trunk of the palm tree. To saqit alayki rutaban janiya. Then you will get a ripe, fresh date. Then Allah gave her three orders or three instructions. Allah said, Fakuli, eat. وَشْرَبِ Drink. وَقَرِّ عَيْنَ And cool your eyes. Means what? Yes. Now, get your eyes, get cooled by seeing the baby. Enjoy your time. Do not think about your people right now. Feel the time of having your baby next to you and cool your eyes by looking at your baby and then Allah said later on afterwards when you see a human being or see one of your people one of your group say to them not to say just point to them you know Sayyidina Zakaria what we mentioned last last week Sayyidina Zakaria how many days he asked Allah for a sign three days that he will wake up and will not be able to talk. So Allah said, when you, whenever you see anyone from your community members, do not talk, 
point at them with the sign language that I had never for Allah to abstain from talking. For how long? No, for one day. فَلَمْ أُكَلِّمَ الْيَوْمَ Today, today, I will never ever talk to somebody. And how Allah expressed about this? صِيَامْ إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ لِلرَّحْمَانِ صَوْمَ Allah said, tell them or point to them that I have never. You know never? What's never? Like the like the obligation that you put upon yourself. You know, you never, you do never for Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah said, point to them that you have never for Allah, that you are practicing sawm, you are sa'ima, you are fasting. That's why when we were talking in Ramadan about the linguistic meaning of fasting, not the shari'i one, the linguistic meaning of fasting to what? to abstain. So if you said, I will abstain from eating mangoes, for example, means you have siyam. I will never ever take any sugar anymore. That means you have siyam. Siyam is not only in Ramadan. And at that time, it was in their religion to do siyam from means abstaining from talking. This is what the same happened with Sayyidina Zakaria. And she said, or she pointed, when she got rested, when she became like relaxed, when she realized that Allah's power beyond all of this, when she realized the truth, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is instructing her with each and every point. You know, all of the sudden, it's not easy. All of the sudden she got pregnant. All of the sudden she had a baby without somebody's touching her. And the most important thing, the stream in the desert and the, the ripe fresh dates. And before that, she had signs before that, Whenever Zakaria goes to her to the mihrab, he finds something. What I told you last time, the fruits of summer in winter, the fruits of winter in summer. So she had some, she had like hints, glimpse before that. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَأَتَتْ بِهِ قَوْمَهَا تَحْمِلُ Now she carried the baby, goes to her, She's going to her people, the group, the community. Once they saw her, قالوا يا مريم Oh Maryam, Oh Mary, لقد جئت شيئا فري You did something unprecedented, unprecedented. Means you did something unusual, means they are, you know, accusing her that she did something haram that she committed zina, adultery. It seems like you did something wrong. Then they started to remind her of her lineage. They said, Ya Ukhta Harun, oh, the sister of Aaron. She wasn't really the sister of Aaron. Aaron was the brother of Musa alayhi salam that happened a long time after Musa and Aaron, but she came from the same lineage. They reminding her of the lineage of Harun. You know, even if we have the same uh, tradition till today, they call you with, the, with, the, with your family name. And if something happened, they reminds you of your family, of your lineage. They said, Ya Ukhta Harun, Oh, the sister of Aaron, Ma kana abu Your father was a righteous person. He wasn't an evil man. Your mother even wasn't unchaste. She was a good woman. 
she was polite, she was modest. So what happened to you? Your father was good, your mother was good. Even your lineage, you came from the lineage of the prophets and, the, and messengers. What happened to you? Now, she had siyam. She's fasting, she cannot talk. Allah said, فَأَشَارَتْ إِلَيْهِ She pointed to the baby. And they said, subhanAllah, they said, how come we talk to the, a boy who was just, who is just in the cradle, he's just in the cradle. How could we talk to a boy who was just born? He's in the cradle. How could? And here is the, here is the miracle. Here's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made as a miracle. It's not one miracle. His, his birth was a miracle. Even what happened with his mother was miracle after miracle. And this is one of the miracles of Sayyiduna Isa, of Jesus, peace be upon him. He started to talk. The, 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 even the Bible, the Bible did not acknowledge this miracle. And lots of people are denying the fact that Jesus was or talked in the cradle. They said he didn't talk in the cradle. Some of them, some sect, like minorities, but the majority said that he did not talk. And he left his mother facing that destiny. And she lived in humiliation. That her people, he humiliated her to the point that she wasn't respected anymore. Our version, you know, the Quranic version that Jesus talked in the cradle and the first thing that he said, Inni Abdullah, I am the servant of Allah. He gave me the scriptures. And he made me as a prophet. Look, this is the speech of Jesus. I was thinking of, you know, giving the, the next Jumu'ah about the speech of Jesus in the cradle, maybe inshallah in details. So he said, Allah had blessed me. Whenever I go. And Allah awsani. Awsani means advised me, instructed me. Allah had taught me. Allah had ordered me. Bissalati. Wazzakati. Madum tuhay. To perform salah and to give zakah as long as I am alive. Subhanallah. وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَتِي And to honor, respect my mother. وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْنِي جَبَّارًا شَقِيًّا And he did not give, make me as a tyrant person. وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيَّ This is what Jesus said. He said, peace be upon me. يَوْمَ وُلِدْتُ The day that I was born in it. وَيَوْمَ أَمُوتُ The day that I will die in. وَيَوْمَ أُبْعَثُ حَيَّ The day that Allah will arise me alive. The day that Allah will resurrect me alive. Then Allah said, ذَلِكَ عِيسَ بَنُ مَرْيَمْ this is Isa. This is the reality of Jesus, the son of Mary. Qawl al haqq The word of the truth. Alladhi fihi yamtaroon. That which they are in dispute in it. Then Allah wrapped this by saying, Ma kana lillahi ayyattakhidha min walad. It's not befitting to Allah to have a son. Subhana, exalted he is. 
Glory be to him. Subhana, idha qada amr, fa inna ma yaqulu lahu kun, fa yaqul. If Allah wanted something, he will just say, be, and it will. Be, and it is. This is only, well, if Allah wanted something, Allah will say, be. Just be. And it is. It will happen. Subhanallah. This is what Allah had mentioned in the story about Sayyiduna Isa, about Jesus, his miraculous birth. And of course, the rest of the life of Sayyiduna Isa like had lots of miracles that we Muslims, we are Muslims, we believe in it. We believe that he had the ability by the permission of Allah to give cure and heal to the sick people, to restore the eyesight of the blind persons by the permission of Allah, by the will of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we said that he was the son of Allah, so that means what's the relationship of Mary to Allah? So if that's automatically, you acknowledge that Mary was the mother. So who, who, who was the father? That's the case. So just, I want you to think about it. If you related Jesus to Mary as a mother, as his mother, so when you say that Jesus is the son of Allah, which is astaghfirullah, ta'ala Allah, amma yaquluna uluwan kabira, subhana, glory be to Allah to, to associate any partner or any son or any wife for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, but just, so just thinking of this, if you said that he's the son, so where is the, the wife? Allah has no wife, has no son, has no comparable uh, human being or creation. He's Allah, the only and the unique one. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. Lam yalid. وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفُ وَنْأَحَدْ You know كُفُ وَنْأَحَدْ? No one is comparable to Allah. No one is similar to Allah in his names, in his attributes, in his ability, in his qudra. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We as Muslims, we believe in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakumullah khairan. I'm sorry for taking too much time. I, I, I think that you get used to this word. I'm sorry to, to take too much time, but alhamdulillah, at least we finished that story. Inshallah, next time, if Allah give us time and life, we will talk about the story of Ibrahim. Abraham, inshallah, and his, his conversation with his father. But just I wanted you to think from today to next week, inshallah. Allah talked about the story of Zachariah, Zechariah, and his son, John, Yahya. Then it's, it's under, under, understandable that he talks after Zechariah, he talks about Mary. That's understandable. Why Allah after Mary is talking about the story of Ibrahim? Why? What's the significance of that? What's the reason behind this? Inshallah, that's for the next time, inshallah. Zakumullah khairan. Barakallahu li wa lakum fi al-Qur'an al-Azim. Wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bima fihi min ayatim wa dhikr al-Hakim. Hada wa usalli wa usallimu ala al-mabu'uthi wa rahmatan lil-alameen. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.